Not long ago, astronomers made a curious observation. Most stars in the galaxy are not solitary. In fact, many are born in pairs. Twin suns coalescing from the same cloud of gas and dust, spinning around each other. Which begs the question, did our sun have a sibling? A second star that may have helped shape the solar system, and maybe even Earth's history? Our story begins not in a telescope but in the fossil records. In 1984, paleontologists David Root and Jack Sepkowski published something remarkable. After studying hundreds of millions of years of extinction data, they noticed the pattern, a pulse running through the history of life on Earth. Every 26 million years or so, a major extinction seemed to occur. Not just random chaotic events, but something disturbingly regular. Some of these events, like the one that ended the reign of the dinosaurs, were already linked to massive impacts. But Rup and Sokovsky took it a step further by uncovering a broader cycle so regular it hinted at something far beyond Earth, an unseen force marking time between catastrophes. A pattern that precise was hard to ignore, and it got astronomers curious. What if something beyond Earth was influencing events on a cosmic timescale. That curiosity led to a bold hypothesis. In a 1984 paper titled Extinction of Species by Periodic Comet Showers, physicists Mark Davis, Piet Hutt and Richard Muller proposed that the Sun might have an unseen dim companion, perhaps a red or brown dwarf, orbiting far beyond the known planets on a long elliptical orbit. Every 26 million years or so, they suggested this star would swing through the outer Oort cloud, disturbing thousands of comets and sending some hurtling toward Earth. They called it Nemesis after the Greek goddess of retribution, a fitting name for a star thought to deliver catastrophe with such unsettling precision. And in Nemesis, science found not just a name, but a suspect in one of Earth's deepest mysteries. Nemesis wasn't just an intriguing hypothesis, it was a lead. If it had shaped Earth's past, then perhaps it was still out there, buried in the cold outskirts of the solar system, waiting to be revealed. So throughout the late 1980s and into the 2000s, astronomers launched an unprecedented search. Sky Survey scanned the heavens for a faint distant object, perhaps a red dwarf or a cold ancient brown dwarf, that had quietly orbited our sun for billions of years. Not bright enough to be spotted easily, but not entirely invisible either. And then in 2010, a game-changing survey came online, WISE, NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. WISE had one job, to map the sky in infrared, a wavelength that could pick up heat from objects too dim for optical telescopes. If Nemesis was hiding in the darkness, Wise would see it. But the data came back empty. No red dwarf, no brown dwarf, no hidden star within 26,000 astronomical units from the Sun. For all intents and purposes, Nemesis was not there. But even with no trace of Nemesis, the idea wasn't dismissed, because the search had been shaped by one big assumption. If Nemesis existed, it had to still be nearby, gravitationally bound to the Sun just hidden in the dark. But what if Nemesis was never bound to the sun at all? What if it had already slipped away, gone before we ever thought to look? That idea gained traction in 2017, when a survey of the Perseus molecular cloud, a nursery of young stars, found something striking. Nearly all sun-like stars appear to be born in binary pairs. According to researchers, our sun likely had a sibling too but in many cases those siblings don't stay together. In the chaos of a dense birth cluster, binaries can be torn apart before planets even form. Nemesis may never have been a lurking destroyer on a vast orbit. It could have been something far more subtle, a twin that shaped the solar system's infancy, then drifted away lost to the galaxy billions of years ago. If the Sun truly was born with a sibling, 
then the Nemesis hypothesis wasn't entirely wrong, it was simply incomplete. Because even a brief companion in those early unstable days could have had a lasting effect. During the solar system's infancy, the protoplanetary disk was a swirling, fragile structure of gas, dust and ice. A second star, even one that didn't stay long, could have disrupted that disk's stirring material, triggering gravitational instabilities and shaping the orbits of forming bodies. It could have disturbed the outer regions of the disk, scattering planetesimals into eccentric orbits. It might have carved gaps, tilted trajectories or even helped seed the distant Oort cloud with icy debris. And long after it vanished, those disturbances would remain, etched into the architecture of the solar system itself. So the question shifted, not where is Nemesis now, but if it was here, what traces did it leave behind? When you look towards the edge of the solar system, you start to see the clues, scattered signs of what Nemesis may have left behind. Take the Kuiper Belt, a ring of icy objects beyond Neptune, home to Pluto and other frozen worlds. But strangely, it doesn't stretch on forever. Around 50 astronomical units from the Sun, the population drops off sharply, as if something once trims the edge clean. Then there's Sedna, a distant dwarf planet with an orbit so stretched and isolated, it suggests a gravitational influence we haven't yet identified. These features suggest something happened, something reshaped this part of the solar system, and a stellar companion present during the Sun's earliest days fits the pattern. It could have disturbed the outer disk, it might have scattered rogue objects, it may even have helped seed the Oort cloud, a vast icy shell that surrounds our system. But these aren't just architectural quirks, they could be echoes of something far more consequential because if a companion star helped shape the outer solar system, it might also have nudged long-period comets onto paths that cross Earth's orbit. And even if part of the extinction cycle is right, those distant nudges may have helped write and rewrite the history of life on Earth. But what about those extinctions? Does the 26 million year pattern still hold? Maybe, maybe not. Some researchers see a signal, others say it dissolves under better data. And even if there is a cycle, Nemesis might not be the cause. The solar system moves in and out of the Milky Way, dense mid-plane every 30 million years or so. That oscillation could disturb comets too, no companion required. There are even more exotic ideas such as dark matter disks, galactic shockwaves or simply random chance. But that's not where this story ends, because Nemesis, real or not, led us somewhere deeper. It opened a door to questions about the solar system shape, its distant scars, and whether our sun was ever truly alone. And while the idea of a hidden star still circling the sun is now largely ruled out, the idea that our sun had a twin, born with it then lost to the stars, still stands. Unproven, but possible. And maybe, just maybe, the outer edges of our solar system still carry its fingerprints, because even if Nemesis is long gone, it might have shaped everything we see.